Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux. And yes, friends, I'm going to be talking about NeoVim today, even though I am absolutely no expert on this at all. And most of you will realize that I have purposely avoided talking about NeoVim. I use Micro for the most part. However, there are a few of you that have asked about this. I think the true test is, will I be using this? And the answer is, I don't know. Frankly, I use Genie for everything, for the most part. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't want to learn something new. And that is my goal here, is to learn something new with NeoVim, understand actually how really powerful it is. As far as a terminal text editor, I don't know that you can find too many things that are on par with this. So let's get started. As a Debian user, I am generally okay with whatever is in the Debian stable packages. So sudo apt install, I don't know, OBS studio, and that's fine. But when it comes to NeoVim, if I go over here, this 0.7.2-7 is just nowhere close to where it should be. Even if I go to Debian Trixie, which is the testing branch right now, it shows 0.9.5. Now, granted, we've got a ways to go before testing becomes stable. It's going to be a, close to a year. So this number I'm not worried about at all. But if I go back over to the NeoVim GitHub, you're gonna see that the version 0.10 is the new stable branch. There are several different ways to use the latest version of NeoVim. One would be an app image. Now, I'm not gonna use an app image. That's a personal preference. I, I choose to install things natively, okay? So I don't wanna use an app image and I don't necessarily wanna use a flat pack either. Now, does that mean that flat packs are bad? No, I'm not going to push back that hard. Um, I think that some people who are against flat pack would cite that they have performance issues. It's harder to update. Um, and there's dependency duplication. I think that's actually the most valid point because when you containerize something and all of the dependencies have to come with that container. So... If you have several flat packs, they may have the same dependencies, and so you get duplication there. Again, not that big a deal if, in the grander scheme of things, I choose to use something else. Now, here's a very easy way to install NeoVim. It's right on their website, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, it's just these three commands, and then you add the export path statement to either your bash RC or your ZSHRC, and, um, and you'll be gold. However, this is not the way I install NeoVim. I actually build my own Debian installation file. Now, it's not that hard. Uh, I will leave a link to this little script right here. I'm going to go actually blow this up so that you can see the text a little bit better. Okay. And you do need to have a few dependencies in order to do that. It's not that big a deal. Um, and then you just have to run this. Now, this actually takes longer than you think. It's weird. But it does take a little bit of time in order to crunch it so that it builds this nvim linux 64deb file. Now, why would I do this? Because if I install it natively like this, it will show up in a couple different places. Namely, let me go to Workspace 3 and just, let's say I go to a, my Bash RC, and I generally, like I said, open things with Genie. But if I go open with, there's NeoVim. So I don't know that that would be there if it was installed in a different, another way. Another thing is, if I go to my Rofi and I start, there's NeoVim right there, text editor, because it has been installed natively. Now, I don't know any other way, frankly. You guys know, I am just a guy, and I think this is right. I hope that it's right, but it works for me. So, do you need to run this script? No, you don't. 
It's actually in my GitHub NVIM repo, okay? And it's right here. And all you need to do would be to run this command or run the installation for this. So sudo apt install and then dot slash NVIM blah, 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 okay? So let's, we'll do that in a second, but I wanted to show you the plugins that I am currently using. There's 11 of them, okay? Now you're gonna notice things that aren't there, especially if you have seen YouTube installations or configurations for NeoVim by somebody that does software development. I do not. So I do not need half of what they put in as far as plugins like LSP clients and so on. So there are, these are cherry picked for me in particular. Now, I'm not going to talk about all of these plugins. I will be able to refer to them when I'm actually demonstrating uh, the configuration for NeoVim in a few minutes. Okay, well, let's get to the good stuff. I'm going to go to my terminal, and I am going to go into the .config directory. So let's git clone my GitHub and then my NVim. Okay, just like that. And there you go. Let's clear the screen and let's go into NVIM. And let's L, oh, LS, sorry, LS. There we go. And there's that NVIM uh, Debian file. Now there's a couple different ways to install it. Uh, if you saw, where was it? Right here, you can just run this command, sudo dpkg and so on. I generally do it this way. I say uh, sudo apt install dot slash and then invim now it's already installed but i'm just going to show you it just says uh neovim is already the newest and is version 0.10.0 so let's clear the screen allow me to warn you <laughs> if you did not want my configuration file maybe you should have just taken the debian file and install it that way. But if I run NVIM now, because all of my configuration is in this .config NVIM directory, it's going to use those configuration files and build it. So I am going to do it. I'm just gonna say NVIM and there you go. It's gonna start retrieving all the information, sorry, all the information, all the plugins and everything and it is configuring, configuring. That sounded smart. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Uh, I am going to just um, colon Q and I'm in a new text file and I am going to quit that as well. Now, what do I wanna do next? Now, what I'd like to do is actually show you the mappings. And I think what I'm going to do is use Genie to do it. I know I should probably be using NeoVim, but if you go into the NVim directory and then go into the Lua, there's going to be two different directories, okay? One is going to be core and the other one's going to be plugins. Now, you, you can see if you're interested, you can go into all of these uh, Lua files to see what it looks like. And I'm not gonna take the time to do that. However, you may be interested. Now, under core, there are two files. One is for options, the other one is for mappings. We are currently looking at options, but more importantly, mappings, because that is more in line with what are the key bindings for this, okay? So leader T would be add a new tab. Leader is the space bar. Okay, so leader T or space bar T and you're gonna get a new tab. Leader X or space bar X, you're gonna close the tab J and K to go to the next one, all right? Now I really like buffers, okay? I haven't learned about it until very, very recently and you can just go tab, tab, tab. If multiple files are open, you can tab through it. Now, also, you should know leader E or space E, and that's going to use oil, and you're going to be able to navigate easily. Here's 
the key bindings for telescope, and that's fuzzy finding or fine files and so on. Um, and then fugitive and markdown preview. So markdown we are going to talk about as well, and that is uh, spacebar MD for markdown. And that is something that I really, really use a lot. Well, I'm trying to use more of. Let's put it that way, okay? So let's go back over here to actually Workspace 2. And if I just say uh, NVIM, it's going to come up with the alpha plugin, which is a greeter and basically is showing you files that you have already opened in the past. And if you want, it's kind of a quick way to get back to that file. So what I'm going to do is just tap one, all right? And it automatically got me back into uh, that mapping.lua file. Now, while we're here, let's use a new tab by using leader T right here, okay? So space T, okay? And it opens up a new tab, all right? And since there is nothing there, I can uh, use space E. Space E is for the oil plugin, space E. And it shows me a list of things. So let's, um, I'm gonna go up one level and I am gonna go to actually suckless and then DWM and let's go into the DWM, uh, sorry, the config.def.h, okay? And so there you go. And look at that, tree sitter is now, uh, parser for CPP has been installed. Okay, cool. I'm glad that I used this configuration file as the example. Now this is the DWM configuration and it is written in the C programming language, which is represented here by this parser CPP has been installed. And because of that, you can see the color highlighting based on that parser. Also, you get to see what the colorizer plugin does. It's basically showing you what the color, for example, pound 80BFFF is this background color, that blue. And I really like that when I am doing configuration files for whatever. If I need a color, I wanna know what that color looks like on the screen, and there you go. Now, speaking of color, I didn't even mention this. Let me go back over here to one, okay? The color scheme that I'm using is called Kanagawa. Okay, this is my particular cup of tea here, and it shows the, what the light color and the dark colors and everything looks like. I know that there's a bunch of you out there that <laughs> are all about the Groovebox color scheme. I just am not one of those people. So this is my choice for this particular configuration. Actually, let me go back here. So this is the Kanagawa color scheme for everything you see here. So navigating between the two tabs, all right, it's space J or space K. So space J and you go to the mappings and then space K and you are back to the config. Now I'm not going to show you a whole lot of actual functionality within NeoVim. I am not the person to do that. All I'm doing is setting it up so that I can use it hopefully more efficiently, okay? So let's say I want to go back and now let's exit. So I'm just gonna say space X, okay? And it closed that tab. Now, is it gone? Yes, but it also is still in the buffer. So if I hit the tab key, all right, it goes to whatever is in the buffer. So there it is and now I can resume working on it. So I can choose to just kind of go tab, tab, and I am going through whatever is currently open or whatever is actually in the buffer right then, and then I can work that way. So I don't necessarily have to have tabs all the time, but it might keep you more organized. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go spacey, all right? And I am gonna go back to the NVIM directory and open up the readme.md file, okay? And it shows that it is in Markdown, okay? And also, I wanna show you what that Markdown plugin does. So I'm gonna hit space MD, okay? And there is a representation of 
Um, that markdown file. So actually, let me move this over to Workspace 2 so that if I do make changes, let's say, um, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to hit I and end, and then let's add a couple lines and then say, uh, this is a markdown file. And there you go. It's actually showing what in NeoVim, when you make a change, it's showing it in your browser. And in this case, it's Firefox. So it's showing you the exact uh, duplication of what this would look like um, in, let's say, GitHub, for example. So it's actually showing this README. This is a fantastic feature and a fantastic plugin, and one that I will probably use in the future. So it's this Markdown Preview uh, plugin, just so if any of you who are interested, uh, that is, that's what I'm using. Now I've said repeatedly that I am no good at using NeoVim, and so I will not be demonstrating it at all. However, I have tailored this configuration for me specifically, and hopefully it can help you as well or be useful to you. And so the time that I spent in actually configuring it will hopefully push me into using it more frequently. So with that said, good luck, <laughs> and I'll see you all very soon.